don't think I know if it's over. Why? Why not? I mean, I thought about it for a long while before I did it. I mean, I got a lot of uproar from the whole industry, but who are they to judge me? Yeah, I mean, what are they? I mean, they can all go to hell. They don't pay my bills. No, you got a point. And that's that. Happy Monday, everyone. I can't believe I'm actually awake from the dead. I mean, it's been crazy. Um, I think last week coming back from WrestleCon in Philadelphia, WrestleMania, it's just one of those things where, I don't know. Hey, Paul. Um, I don't know. It's just, I was dealing with the time change. Hey, John Jay. Hi, Kevin LaRose. How are you? Hi, everyone. Yep. It's that time of the week. It's that Monday. Hey, Jamal. How are you? Um, I think it's so cute how everyone says hi to one another here. Hey, Scott. But yeah, I think it's very adorable. Uh, Brandon Stevens, you want to marry a white girlfriend? Well, hopefully you have one. Um, hey, Eric. Yeah, I know. I hope some of you did not go on last week expecting anything because last week was uh, just too much. Um, it was just too much going on with traveling back and forth. And, you know, I got to say, sometimes some flights, like in certain routes, are like more efficient and um direct than others which is just great but like when you get these other ones with like american airlines from a flight like let's say la to philly philly to la okay not only is the business class crappy hey ian uh good day it's just really ugh, i don't like it but anyway yes Everyone, make sure anyone who is in Mesa, Arizona or Phoenix, I will be there on May 18th, Wrestling for Phoenix Championship Wrestling, and May 4th in Salt Lake City, Utah for uh, Devotion Championship Wrestling, which is going to be so much fun. I can't wait. But anyway, so like the first night at WrestleCon, I got to tell you, I closed down the bar. There is some jackass talking about cracking a Cadbury Easter egg and jacking off with the goop in it, Okay. And that's like after I had dinner with Missy Hyatt, like that was nice seeing Missy, right? And her gloriousness and this gorgeous coat she had, which I have yet to like borrow at some point. Then fucking guys talking about jacking off with Easter candy, which means I will never, ever, ever look at Easter candy ever the same again after that. Um, but what I did learn is that I closed the bar out. Then you get people at the convention the next day showing photos, like selfies. Hey, I saw you at the bar last night. It's like, fuck, what happened? But I wasn't too bad. But it was good seeing Missy. But she dragged me out to eat, which is fine because, like, the sugar probably would tear up someone's cock. Like, seriously, that's if they have one. But seeing Missy was the best, I have to say, because I wasn't going to go out. I was going to nap. Then Missy was like, no, come, come eat us for dinner. Okay, fine. So I did. So she's here waiting. And real quick, a quick word from our sponsors. Make sure if you actually don't use a Cadbury Easter egg to jack off, if you want to get some toys to spice up that sex life, sex life of yours in your bedroom or your basement or wherever, um, or trailer park, uh, go ahead and hop on over to adamandeve.com and type in the code crazy train. That's crazy with a K and get up to 50% off of certain items. And of course, uh, what else? Um, yeah, then you could also get up to 10 free gifts. But Missy Hyde has been making a lot of waves with GCW Wrestling. That's Game Changer Wrestling and back. But let's not forget, she is the first lady of wrestling. And do not forget, any of you who are not going to stay for the stream, make sure to catch it on the restream on my YouTube. Let us bring in the real first lady of wrestling, like the only first lady of wrestling who... um inspires me every day <laughs> Hi. Thank you. oh my god your tits look so big Woo! i want to grab that it's a tight shirt tight white shirt but let me tell you oh. i'm having surgery tomorrow i'm having oh. an endoscopy and a colonoscopy and i've been drinking that stuff so i have to run to the bathroom i gotta run to the bathroom yeah. no i get right it no, no problem i got it i did one of those and i have to say it was 10 pounds by the way <laughs> I wish I could lose 10 pounds. You don't need to lose any weight. You're so teeny and little. I didn't realize how little you are. Me? Yes. Oh, you're teeny. You got like a little teeny waist. Yeah. Biggie boobies. 
I got a picture of you holding your boobies, but anyway. I know. I heard you guys talking really about know. um I heard you talking about WrestleCon. What shows yes. did you check out? Did you get to see any wrestling shows? Hey Joe, yeah. I actually okay, so I went to this one show at this place called Photo Club. It's uh -huh. like a European disco part of it. And I was boogieing with this guy named Joe Beasler, who's in the chat now. They had a no ring show, right? And it was on like a disco floor, which looked so fucking cool. Oh, wow. And yeah. And then that British wrestler who you yelled at, um, that I asked, <laughs> who was in that, we, we were playing a joke on Lou Nixon. We're like, stop sexually harassing the female talent. But it was the other oh, way yeah. around. I kept bugging him. I was like, leave my girl alone. Stop <laughs> sexually harassing her. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, Joe. Only Joe Beasler knows the, the dirty details of that. But um, so, yeah. So it was really cool. I wanted to go to GCW. I wanted to go to all these shows to eat the turnbuckle. But the first night in, it was like, I, you were like on my priority list. Then Lou, yeah. Fine Guy Dudley was on the priority list. So I'm like, fuck, I got to Let me just stay, like, stay in and just do all this shit. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and uh you know see my friends but uh, what did you like did you see shows i know you yeah, worked on them got you gotta tell me what you I saw and what see, your thoughts are i got to see stardom and uh which was mostly girls from japan and a few of the girls from the u.s you know that were trained in japan were there i mean i was blown away by the presentation but um they had all their dis you know distinctive gear and look and ring music and um, the wrestling was solid but not too stiff like Japanese you know what I'm saying hmm. but um, it was like 9090s all Japan it was really pretty cool and then I saw a little bit of the T TJPW um, from the collective and um, I saw. Maki, Maki, I can't pronounce it. Maki Ito. I think, I hope I'm saying it right. But anyway, she was like a teenage pop star. And then she oh. got into wrestling. And she's the cutest wrestler. She comes out, she's so cute. But there's another group, there's another wrestling girls group that 98% of the guys are are um go to it and they're all dressed up like school girls. Not really school. I mean, Maki Ito does a school girl thing. But they have other girls like a mermaid and a, I don't know. They portray a bunch of stuff, a bunch of like little young girl kind of stuff. And it was kind of creepy in a way to me. I just thought, you know, 98% of the crowd were men. So, it, but they sold merchandise like, oh my gosh, I couldn't believe it. It was amazing. Were they death matches that they were doing? No, no, just regular wrestling matches. It was pretty good. Were they in schoolgirl skirts? Good. Did you get, huh? Were they in like little Asian schoolgirl skirts that you like well, look one, up and you yeah, see Asian girl Asian pussy? School girl. There was one like a mermaid and one, I don't even really remember all the different, I can't even remember all the different little outfits that they came in, but they were like different little outfits that they, that they dressed up in. That's so. like creepy dude i don't know man i don't know but maybe there are guys jacking off with like peeps or like cream donuts or something they were they and were hiding hiding the popcorn box <laughs> hey beasler were you there is that where you were that night <laughs> <laughs> that's creepy Did shit you get the body for the first time did, did i what that? the body no, did you get to meet anybody that you haven't met or met before? Yeah, Jake the Snake Roberts. And oh, um, we you, didn't yeah. really get to meet him because his wife Cheryl was giving us the evil eye. Yeah, I got scared. I'm like, am I walking into like a cat fight? Because I know which team I'm on. Did you meet him? Did you walk? Yeah, before? the next day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My friend has, my friend's son has cancer. So I wanted to get a card signed. Um, They were really nice about it. He's like, 17 or 18 and he has stage four cancer already they they used it's just it's just horrible and if he charged me i would have paid um i got to see a lot of people i haven't seen then todd gordon saw me walking around with my friend my gentleman friend and yes. um matthew yeah matt knows right so then todd's like is that your new boy toy i said no he's too old and todd like spat his coffee out the second i said that 
he's too old for boy toy material. It's true. Like once they're past 28, girl, it's like, uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, 20, for me, for me, like 24, that's, you know, they're, they're not boy toys anymore. Right? Like sexy yeah, boy Shawn Michaels. Um, I met Trish. I met Lita. Um, I really wanted to, uh, I really wanted Trish to meet. Trish is beautiful. Isn't she? Gorgeous. And she's such a good worker. I know. She got the looks and she can work. It was amazing. I was amazed. I got to meet Aja Kong. She broke Medusa's oh. nose in Japan. And I was trying to tell her thank you. But but she didn't understand what I was saying. She didn't, she didn't understand. And then what really, I was really, really happy to meet Buddy Wayne's wife, Nick Wayne's mm -hmm. mom. You know, Shana Wayne. I mean, she was so nice to me because Buddy and I used to talk all the time on the internet. You know, we'd email each other and I'd, I'd email him and then wait a night, you know, and then can't wait to what he said the next day. I mean, we had a great email, like for a few years, we had a great, you know, because he had a school and everything and, and I just loved him. And I just, and meeting her was like the highlight of that whole weekend to get to meet her. She is gorgeous, gorgeous. I don't know how Buddy got her because she is just absolutely drop dead gorgeous. And what a sweet lady, what a sweet, beautiful lady. I mean, she's beautiful on the inside and she is on the outside. So I was really excited about that. And um, I got to see Yoshida Ko from DDT. Do you know what that is? No. It's the oh, life-size doll that Kenny Omega wrestled. Oh. You know, it's the doll that they wrestle sometimes. Oh, that that was that thing on Instagram I saw? Yeah, literally guys would take bumps with this thing. Oh, my God. And do well, like good. doll drivers and have it go over on them. They'd wrestle the doll. I put a picture of it. Didn't you say I put a picture on Facebook of it, of me and the doll. It was really funny. I was like looking at it like. Face, you know, facing off with the dog. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I just, I saw that. I'm like, what is she doing? I mean, I'm glad you're back in the ring because we need more women like you. There's uh, a guy named Virgil Zandig. I don't think that's really his name, by the way. And if this was the real Zandig, he was hot when he had his hair. Anyway, he said he <laughs> misses Buddy Wayne. And was it Paul Heyman who recommended you to start recording WC? What the fuck? And what's wow. the worst thing Bob do ever said to you? What's the worst thing that who said to me? Bob who? Bob D-H-U-E? Okay, we Bob. don't know who it is. I don't know who that no. is. Yeah, me either. Um, so anyway, could be just someone like stalking. But uh, if it is a real person or you have the spelling wrong, Virgil Zandig or whatever your name is, Martin or whatever, could you please um, spell it out for us? Thank you. So I'm glad you're back doing this because I, I you've been – in and out of the well, business. I've been but, in and out. Like, you know, yeah. I, I only, like, I, I retired years ago at, the, at WrestleCon a few years ago in Dallas. Because living in Tallahassee, it's really expensive to fly in and out. And I didn't think people would fly me in and out and pay me. But then people keep would keep calling and asking for autograph signings and work shows and stuff. So I was just like, well... Okay, I guess I'll do it. And plus, you know, I'm going to bar. I, I, barber school. My last day at barber school is Wednesday, and then, and then I take the test. Hopefully, I can take the, the 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 state board, and then I become a barber. And I already have a job lined up. And um, I um, you know, I just I, I just thought, you know, I live in Tallahassee, and no one's wants to fuck me up, but they do. And I got a chance to work with Game Changer. And it was the most fabulous time I've had in Game Changer. Everybody there, Brett is awesome. Um, all the people that work there are just so nice to me. I mean, they none of them were around, weren't even born when I was on TV. <laughs> they don't even know me from Adam, but they are so genuinely nice to me. And it, and it just really feels good. And I got to work my, I mean, I worked in main event in Texas Stadium in 86 against Sunshine in a mud pit match in 1986. And it had to be the last match because they had mud in the ring, right? But it would have been a main event anyway. But 
I got to work the main event for Game Changer on Friday night. I, I did the autograph signing with you. Then I worked the ECW arena, like third match, I think it was. And then had to rush. I was changing. I was putting my underwear on backwards. And you know, put a thong on backwards. You know, I was like, what the fuck? And then, <laughs> so I was trying to, switch, you know, trying to get, and I was such a nervous. And Matt was like going, take a deep breath, calm down. I was just, oh my God, oh my God, I'm late. Because they, they kept texting me, when are you going to get here? We're stalling for you. We're stalling for you. And I'm like, oh shit, oh shit. And it was, thank God it was only like five minutes away. But I, I got there in time and uh, we went out there. And let me tell you something, Joey Janela and Blake Christian mm -hmm. had an amazing match. I think it was 47 minutes from entrances i mean the entrances weren't even that long but entrances to the end and um you know i turned on joey with my gucci purse and whacked him in the back of the head <laughs> then blake i threw the purse to blake and he put it down and did the did the curb stomp on his head on the purse and then did one two three and we got pelted with bottles which was amazing I was standing there like this and people are throwing bottles and cans and stuff at me. I'm like, yay, yay. Be <laughs> careful. Like, I've been a heel all my life. Who would have thought I was a baby face? I hate being a baby face. Throw shit at me, please. You know? <laughs> are you serious? I, I don't know. It, it, you know, things take a twisted turn, but um, I like Joey in your coat, by the way. No, this oh, guy saying, oh, yeah, yeah it looks looked better on you. He matched his gear. He had red, white, and blue gear, and the yeah. blue and white coat matched his gear. Kid Cash wanted to wear it years ago on an ECW pay per view, and I just got it, and I was like, no, that thing's like twenty three years old, and Kid Cash, it should be it should be cleaned. I think. Well, it needs to be cleaned now, but I don't know. It, it's just it, it's a ratty old coat. No, sell it like when the time's right. I mean, make sure you send no, it out with I a like good thing. I call it my Oompa Loompa jacket. And I need it when I go somewhere cold because it's really warm. Because it's real thick. It's really warm. But I got another coat. Um, and I was hoping it would come for the weekend, for Philly weekend. And it didn't come. And it was a, um, a fox coat. Same length fox coat. So, so very upset about that. But. I have these visuals of Missy and lingerie under a fur coat. I'm sure these guys don't mind that. So Virgil is saying Bob De DeHue was the guy in charge of WCW. Did you ever have some kind Bob of bad? Bob Donahue. Bob Donahue. Okay, so he abbreviated it. Sorry, Virgil. We're I not used to um, millennial I, language. <laughs> I think I might have. The problems that I had with in WCW, like the guys that were like this, that were assholes to me were like Mike Graham and Greg Ganya, the agents and right and a few of the other guys I don't want to mention. You know, <laughs> they were like pervs, but whatever. I mean, you know, I started in a business when there was only like three other girls in the wrestling business at the time. Three or four other girls. So I mean I started and, you know, I would go in and set my chair in the corner of the room and look at the corner and read a book, you know, because everybody's doing their stuff. You know, there was no girls dressing room. There was nothing like that when I started. I mean, you know, it was a different world, different time, different generation, the golden age of wrestling. But I like this generation. I think this generation's awesome. I mean, I like the Attitude Era. That was kind of cool. But yeah. I really attach myself to this new generation because I think like GCW is going to be like the next ECW to me, you know? Yeah, I mean, they have good characters and storylines and they run it like a business. And I think he gives a lot of opportunity as well. Like I, I like Maserati Lazarus. She's one of my favorites. Um, she's an African-American wrestler and she was on some of the shows. Like they did a nice little tribute to the African-American community as well. Um, right. Did you ever potato dark journey back in the day? Speaking of, oh my god, I couldn't. She was too quick and too fast. She used to beat my ass every night, man. She, I would just turtle up, you know. Please don't kill me. Please don't kill me, you know. Because this is back in the day before you had one dressing room. We had separate dressing rooms. I never met her before we went to work. Before we went out to the ring, I never got to meet her. Never saw her. Never talked to her never did anything. The only time I ever had any interaction with her was out at ringside. 
And, mm. and let me tell you that, you know, nowadays everybody's in one dressing room and they talk and they go over shit and everything. We didn't do that back in my day. It was a total, total different time, you know. Oh, she, oh, there you are. I see you. I could lip read too. Um, can you hear us? I can't hear you. Hold on. I can't hear you. Hang on a second. Let me just text her. I can't hear you. Um, can't hear you. Okay. Uh, all right. I just texted her. So I know that you guys have some more questions. I mean, it's good that she's at GCW Wrestling. That's a great home for her. I think there's a lot of opportunity there. AEW is another great thing as well. Hi, hey, Monster. How are you? Uh, hi to you. Missy, I think you froze. Um, I think you froze. Uh, hold on. Froze. Um, here we go. I'm just texting her and talking at the same time. Because Can you hear me? She's pressing something. Hello. She has nice long red nails to match the heart on her um, Coca-Cola t-shirt. Um, okay. I, I don't know why she can't, why we can't hear her. Okay. So just re-enter, re-enter, re-enter on link. You look gorgeous. Oh, there she is. Okay. Voila. And thanks guys. You know, we're, we're back in. Okay. Here we go. Now can you, hi, there you are. Okay. Hi. Yeah, no, I think it's great. And like, I'm glad you're doing this back out there. I just feel as though it's like, and I get to work with them again. I thought that was going to be my last show. At Joey oh, Joe's really? Spring break. I got a t-shirt says, you know, Joey, you know, spring break eight and my name's on the back. It, you know, it has the, has the main event it says Joey yeah. Janelle with Missy Hyatt. And I think that's so cool because, you know, I, the first time I ever had t-shirts was like six months ago. I've never had t-shirts before and my name on a t-shirt. I thought that was the coolest thing. I was like, Oh my God, I got a t-shirt with my name on it. But I thought that was going to be my last deal with them. And then Brett called me and said, Hey, can you come to Tampa? And I'm like, yeah, sure. You know, <laughs> so I'll be in Tampa on the, I think it's May 3rd at Friday, whatever that Friday yeah. is. Yes. Tampa. Interesting, by the way. Anyway, um, any interesting stories you can share about us, about your time with the Nasty Boys? Oh, no. Okay. Nasty Boys, one time, I was out with them in a bar, and I was with this <laughs> guy, and they put gizmos in his drink right? And he was getting just wild. Then they left me there with like a $280 bill because we were all sitting at a table together. And then one of them got up and left. The next one got up and left. And then a few other guys got up and left and left me with the bill. So I was like, I paid it. I had no problem paying it. No big deal. So the next pay-per-view, I found out what rooms they were in. And I had everything on the breakfast menu ordered to their room at 6 a.m. So, how much is that like maybe a couple hundred each but that that about makes up for it yeah, yeah it makes that's, up that's for it. Up. you know it makes up for it but i just thought what a rip and they they never knew that i'm the one that did it until i told them <laughs> yeah but they weren't even like ribbing you i think that was for reals unlike some people that play really fucked up ribs anyway moving right along uh do you have any memories working with the sandman raven and stevie richards in ecw yeah, Stevie Richards is cool. I really like him. Um, Sandman's cool to work with. Uh, Raven's cool to work with. They used to call him a great finish man, but I never saw that because all he ever wanted us girls to do at the beginning of the match, get into a fight for no apparent reason, and then get a sent to the backs so and they could have their match. And I used to be like, you're supposed to be a great finish. And I said this in front of everybody, and this is, I think, one of the reasons why they wanted to get rid of me because I, I, stuff just comes out of my mouth sometimes and I don't mean it. And I've said bad things about people. Like I said something bad about Lex Luger years ago and I really feel really, really bad about it. But I heard a rumor about him and I said, I repeated it and it was so untrue and I feel really bad, but he's really, really nice to me and I feel so bad. And next time I see him, I'm going to tell him, I'm going to say, I don't know if I ever got to apologize to you, but I want to apologize because stuff just comes out of my mouth sometimes. I don't mean for it to come out, but I, I said in front of 
everybody in the match, I was like, oh, you're such a great finish man. You can't come up with something for us girls to do. And Polly even took me over and took me to the side and goes, Missy, if you got a problem with something, take him to the side. Don't announce it into the whole dressing room and get, you know, be a, be an asshole in front of the dressing room. And I was like, yeah, you're right. I should have. I, I couldn't help it because I just got sick and tired of not being a part of the storyline and not be a part of the match. You know mm -hmm. that. You're a manager. You want to be a part of the match. You want to pull a leg. Yeah. You want to do something, you know? Like, I got to go in there, and I got to hit Joey with the purse, you know? And, <laughs> like, you want, to, you, want to have, you want to have involvement in the match. You don't want to be the fifth ring post just standing there. I remember the first night that I managed Joey, my best friend said, you were the fifth ring post. I'm like, I don't know how to be a baby face. What do I do? <laughs> Hit the mat, scream for him, yell for him. Yeah. Do I really have to? You know, I mean, I'm like, it was like, it I don't know naturally. what to do. I know but it comes naturally with you. There. I don't know how to be like, you know, I don't know. I think I it's know. a natural thing. It's a natural thing with you. Like, I didn't know when I was working with Necro Butcher this last thing, we were supposed to be heels, right? Because we had the whole MAGA thing going on. But uh -huh. it turned out we became faces. And naturally, you just start slapping the mat and doing everything you can. But I think because he's a cancer survivor, that added to the layer of like being a face. Right. Yeah. But being a bad, being a heel is good. You're you're a good heel. And speaking of that, John Jay wants to know where he could buy any of those awesome vintage posters. So do you have? Oh I have yeah. no idea. I guess try eBay. I don't have any. I mean, I do have. I have like, I have this poster in my bedroom up uh, because I'm on the poster, and I was never. I was only on two posters in WCW: the bikini contest, which is in a frame in my garage. It's not in my, my room or my, all my wrestling stuff is in another room in my house. But, um, uh, and I, and I, and I gave that to Matt cause he wanted it, but, uh, I have that <laughs> frame and I have an uncut sheet of trading cards framed of the black WCW trading cards. And there was only a couple of those. And so I got one of those, but did you get any souvenirs? I got a bunch of souvenirs from this weekend. Or last yeah. Weekend. I took stuff from your table. Yeah, I took uh -huh. something from your table. You just didn't know it. Um, I, I, took I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> no, I took one of your rubbers, and then I have it's like signed. It wasn't signed by you. Then I have photos with you. I got um, I got a couple of photos from Jake the Snake, and I just took little flyers here and there. I guess you know I. Right. It's fun though, because like you realize how big the wrestling community is and what it really is, and. You know, that's that's the other thing is with you being a manager back then to now, what are your thoughts on deathmatch wrestling? Because GCW you know, has also a huge GCW death match. GCW has a lot of deathmatch going on. Yeah. And, you know, it's, I watched it. It's really not my cup of tea, but I, I, I kind of like it in a weird sort of way because it's like back in the 1500s, people loved to go watch people's heads get chopped off. And people get hung. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I guess and th those were God fearing church going people every Sunday. But I tell you what, Friday night, Anne Boleyn is getting her head chopped off. We're going. Someone's going to get their head chopped off. And maybe they'll miss and have to hack it a couple of times. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it was crazy. I got an autographed um, baseball bat from Onita. Oh, did you? And, yeah, I had it in a box. And I had it wrapped up and I, I brought it there, but I had to get someone to mail it back for me because I couldn't take it on the airplane. <laughs> I don't think they'd let me take a barbed wire baseball bat. But I got a Joey Janela um, action figure. And okay. I got, huh? That's cool. Yeah. And, and you know who Microman is? The little wrestler? Yeah. <laughs> I got his mask, one of his masks. He wanted like 250 and I talked him down to two and then I pulled out like 160 and I was like, well, I only got 160. I only got 160. And then Eric goes, oh, I got the other 40. Try to get it for 160 bucks. You know, I work here. You know, I was trying to get the, the wrestling discount. But it's so funny. He sits on his luggage like he's got gold in there. And he's like a leprechaun. He just, yeah, he just, yeah. Because I didn't think about that. Like a leprechaun. And he just sits there. And... 
Smiles. I don't think he speaks English or anything. No, I don't think he does either. But Eric, Eric Sims, as an Eric Sims that I ribbed, is that who was trying to pay or Eric, your friend? Eric, my friend. Not, I, Eric Sims, I hate. He's, he I'll sells Kirby pictures of me that aren't my signature. Yeah, he does that to a lot of people, unfortunately. I, I think know, it's really, right. Yeah, like I don't get like the rib I played on him was I told him there was a manager named Baby Cinnamon that wanted to sign at a show. <laughs> and he fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. And he was showing up at the show looking for baby cinnamon. That's a fucking Hello Kitty oh character. For fuck's sake. You know, I, you know, Maki Ito, the girl that does the cutest, the cutest wrestler. You know, she comes out there and does that. I got, I put a translator app on my phone so I could tell her that I really <laughs> like her work and everything because she juiced one time or she's juiced a few times, and I'm just like. You know, I'm like, that amazes me. I mean, they wanted, in, in UWF, they wanted to cut my hair, shave my head oh. in a match like that. And I was going to do it, and I told them what my price was, and then they were like, they never bugged me about it again. But in wrestling, I've never said no to anything they've done to me. Even they threw me at a water trough on live TV, and I didn't even know if they were going to do it. If they told me they were going to do it, I probably wouldn't have squealed and ran around as much as I did before they threw me in it. I probably would have let them do it. You know, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have said no. And Dusty did it because Cody was at home and couldn't come or something, and he wanted Cody to laugh. I'm like, well, I'm so glad I could be enjoyment for your son. You know, but oh um, yeah. I never Cody. said no to anything, but no one's ever asked me to gig in the ring. Thank God. Because I don't know if I could or would. There's no need to. You're a manager. I mean, you. I've been hit. I, I When Lou Nixon was fighting at California 2 last year, he did smash someone else with a light tube and it gashed my arm because it fell out of the ring. I was oh, right you there. You got to be careful. Room. You can get MRSA from that. I know, I know. Like they pulled it out. It wasn't that bad, but like yeah, but the filament inside gets in there, and it can mm. hurt you. Like let me tell you, I'm not letting anybody smash nothing over my head. They're not gonna <laughs> win. Um, oh God, what was his name? Blake Christian's manager. He picked me up, and I'm kicking my legs, and I'm going, "Please don't drop me! Please don't drop me! Please don't drop me! Please!" I'm thinking that in my head. I'm like, I don't want to break a hip. You know, I'm 60 years old. If I break a hip, it's going to be a year in the hospital or something. You know, I'm not young anymore. And so I, I just remember, I remember I was just kicking my legs going, please don't drop me. Please don't drop, don't drop me through the table. Please don't, you know. Oh, you'd be okay. You'd be fine, I think. No, I mean, I'm not doing training. any of that. If they think they're going to do that to me, they, they uh, uh, no, 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 no. No, I'm down well, for anything. I need two shoulders. I need. I mm. have. I have back neck problems, and they want to put a plate and screw in my neck. I have. They want to put two new shoulders in me. I have sciatica really bad. I've really broken down, and that's just from the few years that I did the cat fighting because we didn't know what we were doing. Yeah, I never tried. I had one wrestling lesson with Billy Anderson, Bill Anderson, out in California, years ago. I mean in 1991 or whatever and i asked when i found out sherry martell was coming to wcw <laughs> i asked um piss off if i could go to the monster piss factory off. and learn how to work so i could work an angle with her and he was like no piss you know, off? i was willing to do it at 30 learn how to work i thought i wish i would have learned how to work but who's piss off huh who's piss off Fish off, piss off. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm like, what? I should have put two and two together. I have yeah. my blonde moment down again. Um, but Shane Mercer like could be mention him. He mentions me every week on his podcast and calls me dirty, nasty names. But, you know. Really? I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't want to even talk about yeah, it. Yeah, you, you don't need that. People do that all the time. Like right now I'm being accused of possibly calling to get a show canceled, which I would never do. I'd rib you, but I wouldn't go call and get a fucking yeah. show canceled. Oh my God. Did you ever tell anybody about the great rib you pulled on me? Well, here's the thing. John Jay wants to know, could you tell me some stories that the two of you have played jokes on um, on each other? I still think the Gene Simmons thing was a joke for towards me that you did when, you, when he had my phone number. I still think that was a rib. But no, they no. want to know. Okay, what is the greatest that was, rib that's I really ever? I gave Gene your number. 
I know you did. And it was till four. He kept harassing me till four in the freaking morning. I'm like, dude, you're old. You have a fucking well, I pay. That you still have a receipt coming for making me oh, drive you. to Miami. Okay, so they want to know what day you will get it. I promise you'll get. It. You won't know until it's over with, and then you're gonna be like, she got me back. That bitch. It be okay. Mean because your your rib wasn't mean. It was funny as hell. Now that I think about it. But no, does everybody I, know about it, or should I tell them? No, I'm going to tell you. Okay, so first of all, Missy was working with me at the time in three in three PW, and I'm grateful for the times you came in to work for us. By the way, you were nothing but a delight to work with. I know you yelled at Edward. I don't know if at that time, you know, we were all partying and doing shit. And I think maybe you might have been before I got sober and I was right. And that's why I did that rib on you. Like I might as well just admit that now. Okay. Um, and that's why I did it. But I love you. And just don't get me back too bad because I'm in a volatile no, no, situation. It won't be, it, but I do want you to get me back. It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad okay, what so, you did to me. It was funny now. I mean, okay, but well, you can tell them what happened. You want me to people want to know what we did yes they okay. want they have to know <laughs> so i'm at home it's like two o'clock in the afternoon and jasmine calls me oh my god i'm supposed to be at a booking in miami now granted i lived in tampa miami's what four hours away about four hours away and so she, and and she's like oh my god I, I i'm supposed to be in miami at a booking she told me where the booking was at told me that da, 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 da. And I'm like, okay, I'll go do it for you. And she told me who the promoter was. So I wrote everything down, wrote the address of the building down, blah, 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 blah. Threw my stuff, because I always have my makeup bag, my my makeup box with all my stuff in it and my other bag. So I just threw in an outfit, you know. <clears throat> I think I had my Porsche at the time. So I threw everything in. Oh. And I remember driving like, you know, 85 miles an hour because you know, the time was crunch, you know, because I didn't know which match it was or anything like that. So I come running in. I got my, I got my, my, um, oh, I think I washed my hair and got in the car with the wet and let it dry on the way. But I had a curling iron with me. I remember I had a curling iron with me because I left it there. But I come running in. Now, where's the girl's dressing room? Okay. So I go running over there and I plug my curling iron in and then I go running to the promoter. Hey, I'm Missy. Jasmine couldn't make it, but she sent me here instead. And he's like, huh? Yeah. Jasmine said she can't make it and I'm here to work for her. And you're going to pay me what you were going to pay her or whatever. And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And I'm like, Jasmine St. Clair, she's not supposed to work here. No, no, Missy. He knew who I was. No, Missy. Oh, okay. Never mind. And New Jack was there, and I didn't know he was there. And at this time, New Jack, I think, was mad at me. I don't know. Sometimes yeah. shoot interviews, he said nice things about me. Other shoot interviews, he said bad things about me. I don't know. New Jack was with different drugs, different days, different stuff. Anyway, so I just remember going, oh, okay. Sorry to bug you. See you later. So I got back in my car, and I remember going, fuck you, Jasmine. What? Oh, my God. I'm getting her back. Oh, I'm going to get her back. So I tried to call you to tell you, I'm going to get you back, girl. I'm going to get you back. But you wouldn't pick up the phone. <laughs> well, you were fucked up at my show. Okay, that's not an excuse. Okay, look. I'll give you my other Gucci wallet. As compensation for gas, but you still got. I know. I know that we're gonna do another one day. Um. Yeah. I know. I know. I totally know. Um. I would never do that to you again. By the way, that was a. You know what? That was a class A. That was a five star rib. You got it, girl. Yeah, but then Eric Sims was the one that fucked with you. He called up. He had some girl call the Iron Sheik, pretending to be you. Yeah, they came to my yeah. house. And then we're at the convention, and then he what? He came to your house? They came to my house. Oh. I wasn't there at the time. But someone told me that was with them that he was Ooh. buzzing my buzzer. And then somebody, and then he started buzzing all the buzzers. And you know how New York is. They'll do, somebody will buzz you in. I lived in a brownstone on 75th and Riverside. And then he was knocking at my door. Oh. And then my next door neighbor said there was a weird guy knocking <laughs> at the door. And I'm like, and I thought it was somebody else. Yeah. And um, because I had this creepy guy chasing me around and um buzzing in and getting to me in my old apartment. I had to move from one apartment to another apartment because he kept mm -hmm. bugging me. 
but I thought it could have been him, but it wasn't. And um, because he, he described what he looked like, and I'm like, mm -hmm. tell you know, so I didn't know about it until somebody else told me about it that they came to my house. Dude, but he was harassing you at the convention. It was you, me, Tammy. And then I remember I was two tables away from you guys. I remember that she came up to you. Missy, we're going to go to the room. We got gimmick. I have gimmick for me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And you guys yelled at Eric you know Sims. I, said, I don't yeah. think there's enough gimmicks in the world that would make me go into a room with that guy. <laughs> and even back when I was back when I was loving gimmicks, gizmos, there's not enough gizmos in the world. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, Sheiky baby. Sheiky baby. So what was the e men's baby. strip club that Buff Bagwell worked at? Like, what, what was the name of it? The what? The strip club that Buff Bagwell was working at. I don't at. know. I think it was the Lemon Peel, but I'm not sure if that's what it was. But he was a masseuse when I first met him. You know. Who's masseuse? For men? Yeah, he was a masseuse. He had the table For men? And people would oh. come over to his house and he'd do okay. massages on them and stuff. Yeah, it was a masseuse. And he had the cutest girlfriend that he ended up marrying. And um, I remember when, you know, they take you when you go look at apartments in Georgia, at least in Georgia, where it was, because the apartment complex is spread out. And they take you on a golf cart. And we're driving on the golf cart. And he's out there in these short, like red short shorts, washing his car. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know what apartment is beside him, but if one is vacant, I'm going to live beside him. She goes, well, as a matter of fact, the one across the hall is vacant. I'll take it. She goes, well, I thought you wanted a one bedroom. This is a one bedroom with an office. I don't care. I'll take it. Do you want to know how much it is? I don't care. I'll take it. <laughs> Pay for the view. <laughs> Exactly. Oh my God. And it was so funny because he, he tells a funny story about um, Bill Freilich and Eddie Gilbert at my house. They had an altercation at my house. I Long don't know, time man. Ago. Long time ago. Back Missy, in the older I don't days. Huh? What? No, what was that? I just said back in the olden days. When we could all get into fights and do crazy shit. Um, yeah, before there were cell phones, thank God. Dude, what the so fuck? So much shit you know? I did, and we did in World Class and UWF, Continental, that if we would have had cell phones, man, yeah. I'd be, my reputation would be a lot worse than what it is. It's not that bad. I mean, so what? You Here's the thing people really miss out on. Like, guys, you got to understand, there is such a thing called ring rat reversal, okay? Let me explain right. that to you how this fucking works, because people have to get this shit straight. Missy was a goddess, of the first oh, lady you. of wrestling. These I was guys a small mouse. I wasn't no, no, a no, no, no. I was no. a small These mouse. Guys, but they approached you, so they're your ring rats. And right. that's well, what we yeah. have yeah. Thank yeah. you, Joe. You got to spread this gospel, God damn it! Yeah. Um, like I so I with Jake Roberts and Cheryl stole Jake from me. So his she wife came up to me and said, "Hey, I'm sorry, I stole your guy." I would have been like, "I always call Eric." Always calls it the one that got away. And I was like, "Thank God, thank God, I didn't." I dated him for like a year, year and a half, or whatever. Thank God, I didn't be serious with him you know i'm just like thankful god saved me that way because he's really not a nice person so really he's done to his wife you know oh hookers underage hookers drugs oh. he never paid child support just just shitty stuff, shitty stuff that you don't do something to somebody that you're supposed to love. I don't think he knows what love is. That's a shame. I know. It's a shame because, you know, I found it at 60. I found what real love is. Yeah. And speaking of which, if you're listening, her significant other, that ring, we got to sit down and have a, a round table <laughs> about a ring. And I will help you pick one out. Yeah, I have her ring side. My hand is really light. <laughs> 
Yeah, it, like Missy taught me one thing. If you ever get engaged, remarried, you have to get the down payment of a condo on your left hand. So it could be a ring and a bracelet and maybe like a pair of earrings because that could yeah, still come. No, I just want the ring. I, I have bracelets. I have earrings. I don't care about that. I just need, you know, the, the ring. You hear that, Matt? Yeah. <laughs> he, I'm telling him he has to. He's, um, uh, trust me, when I see him in a few weeks, I'm saying something. Um, so out of the three venues, WSU Wrestling ran. Which one was the worst? The ECPW School, which is a crack house, the Darris Theater, or the Boy Booten Elks Lodge, Booten, New Jersey? Yeah. Which one of those were the worst? Oh my God! Did you put ECW Arena in there? No, he did not. He put uh, WSU ECPW School, a.k.a. the Crack House. What is the Crack House? Yeah. I don't know no, what that did. is. WSU He'll wasn't so bad. It was like it was like a theater, and they had the ring on the stage, and they had like a couple rows up there that people were in the theater. And it wasn't that bad. WSU really wasn't that bad. I wasn't very good. I, I was, They had me doing the color commentary on their tapes, and I really I should have watched more of the product and really got into the storylines, but I really had no clue what was going on, you know, and I really didn't want to be there, <laughs> but I was getting paid. So it was kind of like, Whoa, okay. But, um, WSU she was fun. It was yeah. ahead of its time. It was ahead of its time. All girls wrestling company. It was ahead of its time. I don't watch it. But I watch a lot of ECW, you know, and I thought it was like one of the best, like the most. Did you did you see Paul Heyman's like speech on? Yeah, um, he dropped the F bomb a few times. I oh, love it. I love it. You know what you should watch? You should watch World Class and UWF when I was in it. If you want to see some good fights and good interviews. Well, not good interviews. My interviews sucked back then because I was new. I was green. But if you want to see some good stuff, because. Like Matt and I'll be watching it. He makes me watch some of the stuff. And I'm like, dude, I was there. I don't need to watch it. Like the first, I hadn't seen me ever get thrown in the water trough until he showed it to me. I want to see that. Like, I have to see I was that. like, I'm there. I don't need to see it. But then you see it on TV and it brings back good memories. But he's like, she throws me into the turnbuckle and I take the turnbuckle the wrong way. I, I guess I took it the wrong way. I don't know how to take a turnbuckle throw me into the turnbuckle. I don't know what to do. I, I guess you put your arms up or what. I don't know what that yeah. is. Oh my God, you took that so long. Now I know why you, why you got sciatica, you know, or whatever. And I'm just like, I go, and he, he and I'm like, honey, I didn't know. I wasn't trained. The, the boys used to come out and watch our matches. Like we were, we were dressing room curtain. They were dressing room curtain watchers because they love to watch our our matches because and then there's one that's a really good one me and dark journey and it and it's the worst match ever i think it's negative five stars it was a lumberjack match you know huh. when the guys are outside the ring they throw you back in yeah i kept trying to get out and they throw me back in i'm saying i'm saying he touched my butt he touched my butt he touched my butt you know but check that out on YouTube. You'll get a laugh. You really will. You'll get a really good laugh. Well, I watch, I love watching anything you did. Like when you came to XPW, I knew who you were, but I wasn't, I, I didn't want to seem like a crazy stalker fan, but I was right. so excited to have you there. I'm like, oh, well, thank, thank God. You. It's a real company with like real talent. Holy shit. And like yeah. you and Big with Dudley made it like some of my better days there. Um, I love uh, it. Big Dick brought me there. Oh if it God, wasn't for Big so Dick, bad. I would have never been brought there. And then when I and then when I was with what was his name? White Trash Ray Johnny Webb. Huh? White Trash Johnny Webb. White Trash Johnny Webb. And I remember I wore jean shorts and um what's her name? Yelled at me. I was still in her gimmick. Oh, Jessica and, Darling? No, not Jessica Darling. Um, the bodybuilder girl, Nicole Bass. Nicole was at me because she said I was still in her gimmick. You're stealing my gimmick. Uh. I know. Okay. And I was like, I was just thinking he's white trash Johnny Webb. What would a white trash girl wear? Jean shorts up their ass. I don't know. Is you that know, what I, they wear? I don't know. I mean, you should see. I live in Tallahassee, Florida, the Redneck Riviera, honey, baby. You should see some of the stuff I see at Walmart. I still oh, say yeah. you got a mullet. You got to have a mullet, um, a Missy's well, mullet. Listen, well, mullets are coming back in style. 
I I'm know you should have a mullet contest. Styles. Dude, have a mullet contest. I will fly myself down there just to judge a mullet contest because <laughs> mullets are special. You got to have a lifestyle. You got to have like certain things. Mullets well, you know are no doing? who you are. When I, when I go to work at the shop, I'm having Brutus the Barber Beefcake come there to open yeah. at my shop. And I'm having, and I already talked to him and Missy, and they said they'd come up and he'd sign autographs for me. And the first hundred people get a free autograph picture. And if they're after that, then they can buy one. You know what I'm saying? It'll be the first. Yeah, hundred. yeah. And then that'll be a great idea because I'm having 1031, the country station, do it. We'll have a mullet contest and have you come and judge it. Yeehaw. Yeehaw. Yeah. No, I, I would, and what do they get? Like, they if a free mullet gets like free trims for like, a year well free trims for like six months no um, i'm not giving them free now. trims for that long i'll give them a well, what do you do with mullet? gift card to chilies oh that's a mullety thing or like a case of pbr yeah <laughs> um what else do mullets do half shirt know. like a half shirt a half t-shirt are really kids are really the mullet has came back with with kids like that's six, child seven, abuse. eight graders they it's want child mullets. abuse yeah, but that's child abuse to give a, child, a kid a mullet unless they know what they're getting down with. Like, they got to well, no, know. No, because they come and ask for it. We cut hair at um, schools um, that are low-income schools, and we cut hair for them. And the only times they ever get their hair cut is usually when we come to cut their hair. And this one little boy, I was just supposed to do all over, but I had the clipper on the wrong setting, and I had it on the bald set. Yeah, and I went, eh. And I'm like, oh shit, Mr. B. And he looks at it, he goes, give him a ball fade. Okay. But it's not on the paper because the parents have to sign something. He goes, oh, they'll be, he, and he, the little kid loved it. So he got a ball fade. Yeah, but uh, what else not did I do? He had two stripes going with no hair, hardly. No clipper guard. And I had it open. So it was. Down. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, kids don't know. They live in the moment. But yeah, um, Missy, Hellstrom wants to know, did you ever go to Mams County Showcase back in the day? What county? Mams County Showcase? What's uh, Mams? Yeah, Mams Country Showcase. Mams Country Showcase is what Hellstrom is asking. Where, um, where's that at? What city? Yeah. So let us know what city that's in. In the meantime, John Jay wants to know if you dated a lot of professional athletes like OJ or something. No. And I, you got to tell me about OJ. No, me? Um, oh, I yes. dated. I dated. I'll tell you who I dated. I dated um, Bill Frey like for like a few months. Not anything great. I went out with Jason Giambi, Rod Brendamore for like a month. I only went out with him because I was mad at Jason for going out on a boat with with girls and didn't tell me. And so I was like, "Oh, you're gonna do that to me." I'm going to go out with the hockey player because he loved hockey and I hated hockey. So I went out with him. He's taught to himself. He's very strange. Anyway, um, football, baseball, hockey, football. And, and then I went out with the boxer, but he really wasn't a boxer. He's more of a football player. And um, that was about it. Okay. It's mom's County showcase is what he just said. I don't remember. She doesn't remember. Wait, hold on. Okay, no, he, we don't know where that is. So, okay, if you could tell us where it is, Hellstrom or a photo. And did you ever see the fight between Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff and Sting Steve Borden? No. Did they have a brawl? Guys, did they have a brawl, Joe? Uh, John? It was, and it was Steve. It was Steve Borden and um, Dick Slater who they're talking about. I wasn't okay. there. It was. It happened like two weeks before I came in. To UWF when they stuck Sting's head in the toilet. Oh God, that's disgusting. Um, I know. The, this guy Ian from Down Under wants to know if the WWF signed you up to do interview segments. Yeah, and they sucked. Okay. They want me to be a baby face, and they sucked. And I wouldn't sleep with Vince, so he wanted with me to become a federate and i'm like you want me to be one of two other girls that take ring jackets and wear the shitty looking outfits and i was like mm, no i didn't have a job lined up i had to go and 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 like crawl back to 
Jim Crockett and Dusty. Because I went up to Jim Crockett. Hi, I'm Missy Hyatt. You know, because we were in the UWF. He just bought it. I went out of my contract. I'm going to the WWE and I'm going to get a doll. You know, I said that to him. He's like, okay, you're out of your contract. And then I go to WWE. My shit stuck. So I wouldn't even kiss Vince. But I had to push him out of my hotel room. And yeah. uh, the next thing I know, he wants me to be a federate. And I'm like, mm, I'd rather work Memphis mm -hmm. than be a federate. So I said, well, no, I'll leave. And so I just left the building that night and got an earlier plane home. I was in Anaheim, California and came home, went back home to Texas at the time where I was living. And then had to go with my tail between my legs and ask for a job back. Oh, come on. Really? Shouldn't be like that, you know? Yeah, but, you know, Crockett was really nice about it. He's like, go down and talk to Dusty. And if he has something for you, we'll, we'll let you work. So I go to Dusty and I'm like, Dusty, I heard, <laughs> baby. I heard, baby. He goes, we'll use you. I know how to use you. He didn't know how to use me. But I love Dusty anyway. He was a I good guy. I loved him so much that I drove from Tallahassee to Tampa, which is like 260 miles or whatever. And I got mm -hmm. up at like at four o'clock in the morning and left at, I don't know, 6 a.m. or whatever. and went to his funeral because I really liked Dusty, even though he never really, you know, threw me in a water trough and other stuff. But I really liked him. I liked him as a man. I liked him as a booker. I liked him as a, I loved him. As a wrestler. Yeah. I liked him a lot. He worked for us at 3PW. And then this guy's saying it's in DeKalb County, Georgia. DeKalb oh, County, maybe. Georgia. Mom's showcase. Know. Maybe I've been there. I don't know. I I mean, I used to live north of Cobb County. I, I guess I lived in Cobb. Did I live in Cobb County or the next county up? I'm not sure. Me and Eddie had a house up there. Yeah, it sounds like you have a lot of fond memories of him. And like when I read your book originally, when you were working for me, I had to, um, I, I did read your book and I learned did a lot I, from you. Um, yeah, I did. I learned a lot from you. Not that everyone has to waited. Know. I wish I would have waited until I got sober to write my book because then it would have been more accurate and better. Well, you could always come out with another one. I mean, I see people coming about two, three, four I know, books. But I'm not relevant anymore. I don't yes, think you so. are. Dude, you're at GCW. You are relevant. I saw people there to see you. You look gorgeous. I mean, oh, thank you. And you're getting bookings. Yeah, yeah. You're everyone. She's relevant. I know everyone on here agrees with me. And if anyone does <laughs> not, you're a fucking loser. I and know, I hope you just know, off. Next year, next year, next September's, I'll be in wrestling for forty years. Good. Next Good. year. When and when. Eric is my best friend. And Eric was like, yeah, I, I was thinking he was saying it was this year, it'd be 40 years. And I started having a meltdown until I figured out, I was like, no, for 40 years. No, no. You know, and I'm like having a heart attack. And then I'm like, wait a minute. No, it's next year. I got a year before it is. I got a year and a half before it is. You know, <laughs> People okay. still think it was a great book, though. Like it was well written, and you Thank know, you. someone else. I, I have two guys that really yeah. helped me write it. It's me talking. I talked okay. into a microphone, and then they just typed it out. So it's kind of like talking to me. It's only 189 pages and a lot of pictures, so it's a real easy read. And excuse me, excuse me. No problem. She's in her undies. If you guys didn't see that, but you know, I don't know how many of you have had a colonoscopy on here, but let me tell you, it is the shittiest thing ever. But I think. The, the upside of like doing a colonoscopy is like that stuff they make you take the day before totally just like it gets like everything out. Like you lose your waist and everything like that. And I know that some of you are like grossed out by this. Everyone wonders how I still have a small waist. It's from this master slim coffee I drink every morning. Um, I just go into the gym and like watching what I eat because when we get down to this at the end of the day, your mindset and is a lot to do with your physical, um, you know, the way you treat your body physically, which is true. Oh my God, she's in her undies. You have a cute tukas. She's Jewish. Tukas in Jewish means ass for those of you who do not know the difference. But um, yeah, so it's very hard in this day and age on the indies to uh, get work sometimes for managers because it's uh, it's like a, it's an anomaly. But now it seems like it's a trend that's coming back Jamal, she's at the bathroom. Don't worry. You know, 
Um, shaming losers, what a mess. Yes, exactly. Crawling back in. I don't dude, look at, they, they could be size. Jamal's asking what you want. Jamal, you saw her ass. Dude, you're Did a you brother. You like ass ass and these, these diapers? <laughs> no, <they're, laughs> these are normal them. people. You know who some of them are, actually. Um, Because some of them were at WrestleCon and around the shows. Like, I think Joe Beasler went to some of your shows. He I has, really like, he claims he has better hair than you when you had your Farrah Fawcett do. It's like this big evolution of you. And I feel like um, Nick Zelinke. It was better when I had the Farrah do. I mean, it looked like it was thicker because it was so much hairspray and it was like winged out. I but had I mean, skipped it for that. Then so much, I mean, it was colored so much. And now I've gone dark with just the blonde highlights. So, but it's still kind of, I should take about three inches off because it is kind of ratty at the ends but i just don't want to cut it because as i've gotten older my hair doesn't grow the way it should it doesn't grow long it's not thick like yours my hair is not mine thick. it was thick because it was teased and i had this stiff spray in it that the girl used and it was curled my hair i mean i've got to get it Your hair tomorrow i'm really in really nice but it's so long and it's healthy that's what i like about it's healthy my hair is not healthy I cheat. I take Nutrafol. And the second you stop taking Nutrafol. I take Minoxidil. I just started taking Minoxidil. But let me tell you something. You grow hair everywhere. <laughs> Not the just your head. <laughs> my mustache was curling over my lip. I was like, oh, my God. I'm a mouse. I'm a small mouse. I have hair on my face. Oh, my God. It's horrible. Well, I'm wait. If it works. Hair. Huh? So I stick with it if it would like I use the Nutrafol and then I get um biotin infusions like once a month and then I'm oh, starting to use awesome. copper Where injections. Do you get the biotin infusions. Uh an IV company I use during COVID I was an admin for two of the biggest IV companies in the country. So when you refer business to them now of your friends, they're going to come over to your house when you need something. Um that's, oh, that's like those of, companies, yeah. like if you're feeling sick and you got to go somewhere, they'll come and boost you up with antibiotics and vitamin C and stuff. Is that it? Yep. Or you have a hangover? They come yep. over and give you an IV hangover thing? Yep. Is that I know like every country, any every company like all over, I know a lot of them because they've dealt with me at some point or another. So like if let's say it's someone like a friend of mine in actually April Hunter was in Florida and needed something. I called the company ahead of time to see what kind of nurses they had to see what prices they have, what you're going to do for a first time client who might be a returning client. I need a discount. Like, well, find out if they'd work into, I, they probably are in Tallahassee, but find out. I am going to your plastic surgeon though. I was supposed to go this Friday, but I can't because Dr. my Troy? girlfriend's coming with me as a teacher and she doesn't get out of school till three 30 and my appointment's at one forty-five, and she's in Lake city. So I wouldn't make it in time, but I'm going to be in Tampa. Like I said, May 3rd, and that's a Friday. So I'm going to drive all the way to Orlando and then come all the way back to Tampa and get the appointment and then come all the way back to Tampa and work the GCW show. Wait a second. I, this, I lost my doctor. Ass. Oh, Dr. Oh. Choi. Yeah. Dr. Choi, guys. Yeah. He's this Asian doctor in um, Orlando that some, pe some people go for butt implants. I think his are the best. He's a really good Asian doctor okay. for that. For the BBL, like if you, the only person that would perform liposuction on me is the guy in um Nobody Orlando doctor liposuction on you you're teeny you have no body fat girl I can I can concoct body fat in my brain when I sit in front of the mirror I could do that if I'm bored for like 20 minutes I'll just sit there I'm like okay okay like what's that that's disgusting Where what you the fuck? body fat at what in your fingers I mean come on you have no body fat on you you're teeny no, yeah. that's not body fat, girl. That's not body fat. That needs yeah, to go do, therapist. This, yeah. go do this. And I do that all the time. Yeah. And this I do and too. that. And let me tell you something. I want my make arms muscles. done. But the thing is to get my, I, my arms are wrinkly and to get them done, they, the scar goes from here to here and then they pull it all up and then it's not wrinkled anymore. But I don't want that scar. I don't know if I want the scar or the wrinkles. Like, here's the thing with it. Like, they're supposed to, they're supposed to go in here for that scar. But like, I mean, I think my muscles are, like, I don't know. Your muscles oh, okay. are good. But, yeah, to get I tried. That, but to get this out, all this wrinkle, because this is wrinkled. When I put my arm down, 
you can see the wrinkles. And I use that gold bond crepey skin stuff. I use it twice a day. It doesn't work. And her, cause they're not, they're still there. The wrinkles. So I try to wear shirts that you don't really see the wrinkles, but yeah, but they got to cut it from there to there to get rid of it. Let them do it. It's trustworthy. But, um, Oh, someone wants to know, did, every, did Eddie Gilbert ever talk about teaming with Tommy Rich as the fabulous ones in Memphis? Yeah, yeah, they were supposed yeah. to be the fabulous ones. Tommy Rich, I see, I'm Jewish, so we don't give blowjobs. And um, oh. uh, the first blowjob I gave, I was 17 and gave Tommy Rich a blowjob. That was my first blowjob ever. And it's so funny because I saw him at the ECW arena and I went up to him. I said, Tommy, I just got to let you know, I wouldn't be in the wrestling business if it wasn't for falling in love with you when I was 17. Huh. And he yeah. just smiled. He said, well, thank you very much, darling. <laughs> like Wait, that. who fucking needs a steak? Yo, Joe, are you body shaming me, Beasler? He said, I need a steak. Let, let, me, let me know who you're body shaming, I Joe. I swear to God, I'm going to cut your hair off. You need to eat a cheeseburger. We need to put some weight oh, on you. I don't want to. I have a hyperthyroid, but then I started taking HGH. Oh, the copper injections. If you do them in your stomach, that's what's good for the hair. So I'm going to get a bottle of it um, next no, week. No, I want probably. some HGH. I've taken that before. And let me tell you something. My body looked so good. My stomach was like a six pack. It was shredded. It looked great. HGH is the bomb. Stallone's been on it for a long time because he's like 150 years old and he still looks good. So have I. I've been on it for like three years now. I got it through a prior authorization with my doctor. Um, it's just, it's, it's like about a year. prior authorization through your yeah. doctor? I need to know. You got to tell me. I'll tell you what. So I went to the right doctor and guys, you should be interested in this. It's a weird tale of what happens when you know the right doctors. Uh, like you might know the right lawyers. Um, what happened was I'd been going in for uh, blood work just to see what my levels are with my thyroid. And they did the HGH draw there and it was low. So she gave me Nordotropin, which is like $700 a box. Yeah. So I did that for three or four times. Yeah. Then Humatrope. So I spent about $3,000. The, the box can last you like a couple months though, right? A month, a month and a half. But here's what happened was I'm like, you know, fuck this. I called Blue Shield and they said that, uh, yeah, you know, we would do that, you know. So, yeah, you, we could do that if you want. And then um, I had to keep sending in prior authorizations. I had my doctor fill it out. I told them what to say, blah, 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 blah. We attached all the, like, necessary blood work to show how it helped me. Then right. finally... The guy that pushed it through and Blue Shield had the same birthday as I did. And he pushed it through for 999 refills. Oh, my God. I'm so jealous. And I've only lived like okay, 20 to 30. Tell, when I go see my doctor, David, because after I do this stuff, he's not my primary care doctor, but he's the doctor I go to for my diet pills and my Botox and my face mm -hmm. stuff. He does a lot of, like, he did my laser. He my, had a shitty tattoo around my ankle and he lasered it off. I have no scar no nothing. I mean, it was expensive. It was cost me a $75 tattoo cost me like three grand to have it lasered off. You can only do it once a yeah. month. It's like $250 every time you go. And it took a lot to get that stupid little shitty barbed wire. It didn't even look like barbed wire. It was supposed to be barbed wire. It looked like just dirt around my ankle. But anyway, but he does a lot of stuff. And my roommate's a bodybuilder and she gets, um, um, uh, steroids from him. So I'm going to ask him to do blood work on me and see if my HGH is low. And if my HGH is low, then they can, they can get me a prescription for it. Yeah. Um, and the other thing was, uh, do you, it depends on the insurance you have. And then I could totally I have, tell I you about United. I have a really, really good insurance. Like it, well, it gives I, me $4,000 towards dental work. Okay. I have no, co-pays i have no co-pays for meds i have great i have medicare i mean yeah i'm old, i have old people insurance oh well oh i didn't know okay is that what they it's six oh i keep i keep thinking you're younger but um no I'm i 16, think but i got it because of, of, i i i got it because my back and stuff like that so they gave me medicare I think Medicare, that like it's United, it's United Dual Healthcare or whatever. It's really good insurance. Yeah, 
because I didn't give it to enough you. for my coochie and they didn't want to pay for it. And it was like $371 a month. And I was like, get the hell out of here. So I called him up and you can, you can do four times, four or five times. You could get them to try to get, like, if they say no, then you can ask for, for it to be reviewed again. You can get it reviewed up to five times on the first review. They approved it and paid for it. What was it that you were doing? Interosa. Interosa. What's it's it's for your JJ. Because when you what get old, I, I'll tell you later. Okay, I'm like curious. That? But it's good to know because I think like with, with HGH for United, I think they'll pay for it for you. You might need a couple of reviews. But keep yeah. getting the panels yeah. done. My doctor will write it up. I mean, he'll get the he'll get it he'll get it done. He'll get it done. Failure to thrive. You could say failure to sleep well. No thriving and um and all that other stuff. Like they, if he writes the right verbatim on there, they'll do it. And then you could always review it. But it might take you a few times. But once you do, it's so much. It's it inc it really changes your life. Aside oh, from D three, I slept better. Yeah, slept better. I was shredded. I, 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 I looked better. I felt better. I had more energy. I mean, it, it's like a fountain of youth. But you it, know you can't take yeah. that much of it. Because if you take too much, then your freaking head's going to grow. And you're going to get a big head. And a big a heart. Big and, and your arms will grow. And you'll get stretched huh? on your arms. Yeah, that's what happened to Ultimate Warrior. He has stretch oh. marks in his arms because his arms started growing from growth hormone. I thought it was from like steroids. Um, Paul no, wants to know from HGH. Th that's good to know. At least like we know not to do that. Um, if you're doing it under a doctor's supervision and he's telling you how much to take, then you're okay. But you know how bodybuilders and wrestlers are. Well, if one CC is good, I bet two CCs is even better. Oh, yeah. And then 10 cc's. Um, oh, it's going to get me jacked. You know? <laughs> were you there the night uh, Luna Vachon and primetime Amy Lee brutally beat down Kayla Sparks and Miss Seville at WSU? And he wants to know like, what the locker room vibe was after that show. No, I wasn't. But Luna Vachon was going to beat up um, um, New Jack for me one time. <laughs> Well, hmm. but I wasn't there when that happened. That must have been after me. That was after me. See, and I said something bad about Bobcat, who I love Bobcat. And I knew Bobcat. I knew Bobcat. Got in wrestling. And, and I liked her then. We never hung out or anything. And now we're really, really good friends. And at WSU, I said, you know, when I was doing the color commentary, I was like, oh, she, I go, she's, she's married to a really great, to a great, a guy that knows how to work and she's shit. She's the shits or something. And I wasn't saying it to be mean. I was just being an asshole. Cause I, I was just, you know, I was trying to be controversy and everything. And, and the girls would take everything I said personally. And I'm like, don't take anything I say personally. I try to be controversial. You know, that's what a color commentator should do is be controversial and say shit. That's not true. And, um, but I love her to death. You know, she's, yeah, she's nice. I work with her in Memphis. So cool, huh? I work with her in Memphis Championship Wrestling, and I thought she was like engaged to Al Snow or something at one point. Yeah, they were married, but they're divorced. That's a shame. I, I like both. He's of them. one of those lying, cheating scumbags, too. Aren't they all? Um, Aren't they all? That's up for Matt. Are. I don't know one that's, I know one wrestler who never cheated on his wife. Only Who? one. Who? Barry Darso. Oh, really? I introduced him to his wife in 1984, was it? 83, 84 in, in the Carolinas when I was dating Johnny. And um, I entered, she, her, she did nails at the tanning salon that I worked at. And so... We introduced her to another guy and it was really funny. And she was like, no, no, can I find one that's not ball headed? Well, he was doing the Russian gimmick. So he had a shaved head. He wasn't Russian. going bald. He had a shave, you know, shaved head. And so he had just had knee surgery and he was like, come on, you guys, find me a girl to go out with me. I'm, I'm here alone. And 
da 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 So we go like, okay, so Teresa, we got another guy we want you to meet. She said, okay. And I go, leave your car here. Come with us. We'll go over there. And then you meet him and then we'll go out to dinner or whatever. So we go over there. They meet. They look at each other. They shake hands and, and they sit, sit down and start talking. I'm like, oh, my God, look at the time. Come on, Johnny. Let's go. So we just left her there. Two weeks later, she moves in with him. Then they get married. Oh. And like a year later, they've had a kid. She's got like four grandkids now. Yeah. I'm good I mean, at finding I'm trying to find somebody for her. <laughs> yeah, I think you try them for every. Here's the thing. You got to have like a speed dating service, Missy, or like um, there's one wrestler in the UK that does speed dating. And it's funny, the stories he tells me, it's uh, it's this guy, Joey, um, who's a worker over there. But I hear the stories and the fucking nightmares of guys that go in there and like overstep their boundaries. They're like so eager. They go up to the girl first before the clock starts. And <laughs> you're supposed to. Play it cool, asshole. You know, yeah. um, did you manage luscious, 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 luscious Latasha that night before you went back to do commentary for the tag match with Luna and all them? I don't know. I don't remember. Luscious don't, Latasha. That was a long time ago. I don't remember. Is there was so, so many WSU shows that I don't remember. I remember managing. I managed one time. I don't even remember who I managed there. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm just glad you're doing it. So what do you, do you think that there's actually a comeback now for like female managers or do you think it's I been so, so. overshadowed? I wish there, yeah. I wish there was, you know, because women are wrestlers now. Guys don't want to yeah. see girls that are just eye candy. They want to see girls go out there and be workers and work and have a good match. I'm sorry. Back when I was, you know, wanting to be in the business. If they said I had to go out there and do power slams and this and that, and the other, yeah. I'd be like, get the hell out of here. I'm not breaking a nail. You know, I, I wouldn't be in the business. Like if I was 21 years old now, wanting to be in the wrestling business, there'd be no room for me because I wouldn't wrestle. Cause I just, I don't have any rhythm. I can't remember stuff. I, I, I have, no rhythm whatsoever and you need to have rhythm and you need to be able to like it's like dancing of the stars in gymnastics i was really bad in gymnastics i can't do one of those back flips or whatever or flip flops or whatever they're called you know i can't do that so i i couldn't do it i couldn't be in the business but i hope i hope you know maybe some people see gcw and go hey maybe we should have a female manager you know, maybe we should have a couple female managers because that would be good. I, oh. think, I think everybody should have a chance. And even guy managers, they don't have a lot of guy managers. No, no, no. And, and I think that we miss that. We lack that. But here's the thing is I think you, you're you missing one thing. You're glossing over it. Hey, Veronica, um, she's hardcore. Just hopped on. Uh, what were, what you do real, and this is something Veronica could vouch for, Veronica Kane, is something that a lot of people miss and they lack. Uh, especially wrestlers now is psychology. You have ring psychology. Right. You're not there as a fifth ring post. And I feel as though we're in this temperature and climate where you're getting a lot of girls that want to be managers and do this and do that, or even wrestle or think they can wrestle, but hey, they don't get the psychology. Like they you said it before, psychology. you want to, you well, do, yeah, you're supposed to slap the mat. Really, psychology is really easy. You know, you have a bad guy, you have a good guy, you know, the good guy gets his shine, the bad guy gets his heat, then you go into the finish, then you go home. But the thing is, is everything is so um, worked out in the back. Everything is so, um, they don't watch other people's moves a lot. So they don't mm -hmm. see what other people did. And then they go out there and they do the same thing, you know, or they use other people's finishes as high spots or whatever and stuff, but they don't watch the crowd. But I think you got to go out there and go with the crowd, you know, because just doing high spot after high spot after high spot. I don't understand it. Sometimes I'm like, yeah. excuse me. Okay. So she's back. Veronica, we love you. Miss she's hardcore. And anyone who doesn't know she's hardcore is the hottest thing right now in professional wrestling behind the scenes because it is nursing needs for deathmatch wrestlers and they provide even the small little 
take home kits. I know a lot of you will catch up with us in the live stream. So make sure you check out cheese hardcore on YouTube and all over um, the world wide web. Uh, of course, you know, but this is fun with Missy. Missy, no, what are, you're saying something important that Brian Kendrick said to me on the podcast once. Um, a lot of these wrestlers seem to be doing big moves for the sake of doing, um, we could see you, Austin Powers. Yes. They're doing big moves just for the sake this of doing only big moves. Just so anybody knows, I don't drink anymore. I don't do any kind of drugs. Oh, I've been sober since 2005. So I'm a good girl. See, I miss the old you where I could rib you. Okay, no, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> you can dude. still rib me anytime you want. No, 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 we're, we're not, no, 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 we're not going to do that. Um, who's the rudest I'll still wrestler? Back, then I'll owe you two. Fuck you, don't. I still Matt say has Gene Simmons. One coming too. Matt has one coming too. So. Oh my God, I'm scared. Um, that I'll help you with, but okay. uh, yeah, you can help me think. Yeah, yeah. Well, I could help you rib him easily. He doesn't have to know okay. what we're doing. Um, yeah. who's the rudest wrestler you ever met? I could the answer rudest? that on my end. The rudest, yeah, Rick Rude. No, yeah, Rick Rude. No. The rudest person I ever met would have wrestler. to be Vince McMahon. He's not a wrestler, but wrestler wise, let's see. <laughs> I could name a few, but I'm gonna yeah. do that. That's some low rent well, shit. I mean, I don't think he was rude, but I don't think he thought back in the day, I don't think he thought women should be in the business. And it was Big Bam Vader. And Vader? he never talked to me. He never would say hello to me. You know, he just went in and did his own thing. But maybe because he had his Japanese contract and he'd come to WCW for a little bit and then leave and go to Japan and, you know, back and forth. But one time he's, I had this leather, black leather, Nasty Boys jacket with the spray paint on it. It said Nasty Boys and stuff. And I'd been wearing it for like four months or whatever. And he was like, oh cool jacket is that new no you know but that's the only thing he ever said to me the whole time that he worked there yeah that's not really rude that's just being just i guess he didn't notice me or whatever you know, I no, know. he noticed you. He just wanted to diminish you because that seems to be like an ongoing trend in wrestling even. Um, now, how small do you th I went on the whole Vince McMahon thing. I, I had a really good run on Twitter with that, by the way, guys. And on the live stream, how small do you think Vince's penis is? My guess, if I had to do a pool, I would say like five inches, give or take under. I don't know how you guys do these bets uh, under over an inch. I guess I'd probably say, yeah, probably. He's probably got a little skinny wiener. I mean, he's, he's, um, he's, what is McMahon? He's, um, Irish, right? Irish. Do Irish, I mean, my dad was Irish, so I shouldn't say <laughs> to my dad. I don't know. No, I but, don't um, think they are. I don't, know, I don't I think you really had one. Anybody that has to shit on a girl's head has a small penis. Dude, but I have my theory on that. I think he used one of the dildos in his ass and was getting, this is my theory and everyone knows, a lot of people know. My theory about the Vince McMahon shit scandal is that I think this girl was fucking him in the ass with a dildo and she pulled it out and it had poop coming all over the place, but her face was down there sucking on his balls and that is how she got shit on her head. No, I think Johnny Ace okay. was fucking her and he just shit on her head. Oh my God. Oh, the that's lovely what said, John, man. That's what... That's what she claims. And Johnny Ace said, he's doing the backfiring thing going, I had to do it or I would have gotten fired. Yeah, right. You can Seems say to be no. a lot of backpedaling. I said yeah. no. I said no. You can say no. You might get, you might have to be a federette, Johnny Ace, but you can <laughs> say no. Oh, uh, the Federats. Yeah, but I think a lot of people are backpedaling on mistakes and actions. Well, I know who the biggest life. asshole is. I know who the oh. biggest asshole is. I know who it is. I know who it is. It was, oh my God. I, I just, Ole Anderson. Who? Ole Anderson. And oh, really? Original Four Horsemen. He was the owner of Georgia Championship Wrestling, one of the part owner of Georgia Championship Wrestling. He was. The, the most miserable person in the world. And his book, he's the most 
miserable person in the world. He was so nasty. He called me up one time after me and Eddie broke up and I was in my apartment. He calls me up because come down to the office and give me a blow job. And I was like, <laughs> and I hung up. Never heard, never, he never said anything to me about it again. But he was the rudest, evil person. Him and Bill Watts are the yeah. evil, rudest people. It sounds like entitlement on their part. Like they're yes. expecting you. Yeah, that's that's what it is. Um, when I met Rene Dupree, I didn't know who the fuck he was because I didn't really watch the product. This is a few years ago. Right. And um, yeah, this did go off the rails, Joe. These things do go off the rails. This is what happens when I hop on here. Um, so like he came up to me at some show. First of all, I thought it was just some big, creepy, you know, good looking guy. This is like six, seven years ago. Uh -huh. And um, I was coming back and forth from Europe to here. And then I'm like, okay, then he's giving me a photo. I didn't want your photo, bitch. I really didn't. First of all, you're Canadian. You speak Canadian French, which is with that is a mockery of Parisian French to me. So I have that offense right there. It is a right mockery, there. but it still sounds really sexy. They can tell you you have dirty, smelly feet in French. We, oui. <laughs> and it and it's and it's like, okay. <laughs> Mais c'est pas la même chose, s'il vous plaît. Um, now I have friends who are Canadian, but when they speak French with you, it's just different. And I felt insulted he was speaking French with me because I speak Parisian French, and then you're, you, you, you it, oh. it's just. It's like you're speaking. It's like a slang. It's like a slang. Like patois, like real French, and it's not like eubonics or anything. That's different. Like I speak, I do that shit sometimes. But it's like speaking. Uh, it's like speaking. It's like, it like it's like it's like in people Ugh. in Berlin think other people in Germany don't speak high German. It's like yeah, and you know it's okay. Like I was dialect. so high. Right, but I have a lot of friends well, that are so Spanish yeah. and Spain's totally different than Spanish in Mexico. Si, sí, como esta, like that, right? But the thing is, oh, excuse me, sorry. No, okay, she's getting up again to poop, guys. But no, what I'm trying to say is, like, so this guy comes up to me. I thought it was some creepy guy with a beret, and he's took photos with me. Then he's giving me his eight by ten, which I did not ask for, and um. Then putting phone numbers on the back. It's like, bitch, don't you have a wife in Japan or something or like a baby there or some kind of crazy shit going on, man? Because I just like, I checked out the second he opened his mouth. And what I was saying was I checked out because he opened his mouth. It's like, <laughs> it's like having, uh, it, it, it's was like the really hot, hot bimbo. Hot? Yeah, hot? but it's like, that's the problem. And then he felt entitled that I wanted him. He puts his phone number in the back of a fucking eight by 10. And then I'm like, you have a, you don't you have wives or kids in Japan or something? And, uh, oh, no, 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 c'est pas comme ça, chérie. I'm like, yeah, okay, s'il vous plaît, va te faire et ne me parle pas. So uh, that was the end of that. That was a very short lived. Oh, and he had wife and kids? Je ne sais pas. I think he's got something over there, you know, like a lot of them do. Um, oh, yeah. That was just like, you know, it's a whole thing with entitlement, you know, and it's funny how like we go back to our roots of wrestling because you're almost on your 40th year, which is Paul Corbin would know the exact like day to the month to the time and date because he's good about I that. Stuff. It was September. I don't know the date. I still have my first paycheck though. I can't. Oh my, my God. Paycheck. How much? 50 bucks. Okay. But in 1985 money, that's like maybe 150 now. Yeah, I mean, for as much work as you're doing, like I didn't All know. I did about. was run out and hit sunshine with the purse, and that was it. Well, that's good money. Bucks. I was happy. You shouldn't have to pay me. I mean, to, I wouldn't want to get paid. But let me ask you this, because we have such weird backstories about getting involved in wrestling, and clearly everyone knows, and I've openly admitted this time and time again. Like Rob Black was how I got into wrestling because right. of ECW, right? Then I went to XPW, which is how I met you. What were your, like, it's, it was a weird thing because my paychecks were different then because I was involved in the adult film side of things. So I didn't have the wrestling paycheck, right? right. Um, so. Didn't pay you? Rob didn't pay you? Well, I was getting paid collectively to work for him, you know? Oh, okay. So he made um, you do wrestling and porn? 
Yeah, but I like the wrestling side of things. Like I grew closer to that because my first like pay-per-view that I ever saw was um my first WrestleMania was Hulk versus uh the Ultimate Warrior, Can uh oh, Canada. Okay. Right. So no more poop, Joe, we promised. But uh <laughs> like it's like a you know, so I didn't know what paydays were like until like you go out there on in the indies, you're working Memphis Championship Wrestling, you're paying all your dues. When he first called you to, like, when Alex told you, I'm just curious, and you don't have to give me the actual number. What were you, like, did, what were you paid? Were you paid, like, handsomely? When you worked at XPW, what did you actually get paid for that? Yeah. I think he paid me, I think I was either making, like, either 350 or five. Okay, so I didn't get ripped off. Okay, good to know. Um, yeah, yeah. I wasn't getting paid a lot. I mean, I was married at the time, and I was just wanting to get out of the house. Yeah, I don't blame you. And I, I was, and that. I was hot on. I was on. I was on so many pharmaceuticals and stuff that it was just not funny because I was in a really bad situation. Do you want to see oh, my hi. cat? Yeah. Hi. Feral. She comes Hi. in through the doggy doors. I have two doggy doors, and she comes in through the doggy doors. Her name is Shaniqua. Hi, Shaniqua. She's got this beautiful green oh, eyes. Oh, look at her eyes. Hi. Yeah, Enzo's like sleeping. She's got the feral claws, and she'll get me with Hi. them every once in a while. Hi. I love feral pussy. I love all pussy. Black pussy with green eyes is gorgeous. Um, <laughs> yeah. But no, that's interesting because I just want to know, you know, what people are getting paid then. It's just this comparison of how you got started. I got started and what paydays were like because I didn't know what a payday think, was I like. Think, but to be honest with you, I think you should ask for more money. Well, no, he was paying me two grand a week then to be oh under God, contract. I'm saying now. Now? So Matt, Matt's like, no, we're paying her more than that. Oh, I what I asked? I paid more. No, he's paying me handsomely. Like, yes, I took some bookings at um, Phoenix Championship Wrestling and Devotion Championship Wrestling. So I'm taking other things. I'm going to Australia in November. Yeah, you are the Japan, new press so secretary. You are the I'm new the press, press secretary, secretary for because... the, um, I can't think. I, I'm the undersecretary, but he is the. Um, the Fura. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't. I can't believe I'm having a brain. But I, you know what it is? I'm drinking this stuff, and it's just like making me friggin' dizzy. But he is the uh, all of sports entertainment. The uh, God, he's gonna kill he's me. He's like the Vince McMahon figure. Uh, um, Matt is the one who runs Phoenix Championship Wrestling. John, no, he doesn't run it. He doesn't run he it. He's just, he's just, he's, he, he doesn't run it or anything like that. He just is there, and he is the um, um. Federal Director of Athletic Competition and Sports Entertainment. I couldn't get it right, but now I got it right. That's a and big title. You're the press secretary. I'm the undersecretary. We're gonna. We gotta get. We gotta get. Um, we gotta get the Defense Department. Get a couple. Yeah. Of be the Defense Department. I think or, we should or get Department like of Defense. An army person, like someone who's kind of like army-ish or like yeah, that type of even, look. I think black fatigues and black t-shirts would be cool with like a patch. <laughs> yeah, like clean black pants, by the Baseball way. Baseball hats. Yeah, shit like that. Oh, Tim, we yeah. look. I've, I look forward to meeting you, Tim. Um, Yeah, I know that you're feeling woozy from like not being hydrated from this process that you're going on, you know, know, that you're going through right now. No, I it's like, yeah, I get it. I have to have an endoscopy and a colonoscopy tomorrow because I got a parasite <laughs> on the Jericho cruise. So, oh, well, that I know when they either go me. one way or the other, there's going to be something in me going <laughs> like a little alien from the alien movie. I'm just waiting for it to pop out of my stomach. I'm serious. It has been the last two, it's been almost two months and it's been the most horrible thing I've ever dealt with in my life. Oh, you were on meds. That's right. When we had dinner that night. Um, no, Joe, I've never met. Actually, yes, Joe, I did meet Brett Lauderdale last year at WrestleCon. Um, I was just there kind of standing. I I, I did meet him, but he was being um, the company I was with. The person that was standing there with me wasn't very nice to him, which, you know, I couldn't do anything because my hands. Brett is and my such a nice were... guy, too. I know. He's like, so he looks like a. He reminds me of like someone's nephew or like someone's um, younger brother who's just like there. I mean, he has a successful business and like 
Yeah, nothing he's got for a nothing. beautiful wife, a couple kids. Yeah, and- I saw the yeah. photo of the, the beautiful family. You know, he's yeah. blessed with that, and he's blessed. Like, the thing I admire about him is I remi- he reminds me of myself very much. Is he just kind of sits back, he minds his own business, and lets like people say he shit and do whatever to, stupidity. To start GCW, to start it, he was doing Uber Eats to get the money oh, sure. for GCW. This guy worked his ass off to get where he is. He, Literally, his daddy didn't give him any money. You know, he wasn't, you know, trust fund baby. He didn't mm-hmm. fucking win the lottery and go, I'm going to be a wrestling promoter now. No, he worked his ass off to get where he is. And well, I, yeah. I respect him for that. I respect him because he gets the value of you. Obviously, that's like a uh-huh. big thing. I think that's awesome. And I love Joe. I think Joey's funny. Uh, Janella. Joey I is love awesome. Character. Joey's awesome. But I love Blake. I love Blake. Blake, I mean, oh, I only, the only good Christian is Blake Christian. Well, the only other good Christian is Mike Lindell, the My Pillow guy. Seriously. Oh, yeah, yeah. By the way, yeah, hop I on over. Of, I have two of his pillows on my bed and I have two dog, the dog pillows are really great. Oh, you got- <laughs> It's signed. Hey, guess what? It's 50% off. Just go over to mypillow.com and put in the code. Uh, JR25, and you'll yeah, get up right. to 50%. Fox 24. <laughs> no, I love, I love Mike Lindell's stuff. And by the way, guys and girls, if you're looking to put some spice in the bedroom and whatever, have some kind of a crazy night, go to adamandeve.com, put in the code crazy train, that's crazy with a K, get 50% off some items, and of well, course, I get, 10 free I items. I go there and buy some gizmos. Yeah, I don't want to know what you guys are doing with them. I don't want to know anything about what I don't want to know what you're buying either. Like, seriously. Um, oh, thank you, Joe. Joe's like, oh, we need to change that. We'd love to see you there. I honestly, Joe, I met him when I was with a wrestler that I worked with, and that wrestler wasn't very nice to him. And in that wrestler's defense, I think he had a little bit too much to drink, and that shit happens. But um, the only other person that said nice things to me about Bart Lauderdale is Roberto Rodriguez. He was a manager at WWE. And before he met, uh, before he got sober, he was telling me all about it. It seems I'm glad you're getting sober. I mean, you look great. No, Your I've skin's gonna love you. 2005. That's crazy. I had a drink last night. Did you? I don't mind. I, I I can drink. I mean, because I, I alcohol was never my drug of choice or whatever. I just don't drink because I do take medication that I can't that I should not drink on. Yeah, you know, I remember. It says don't drink alcohol. So, you know, <laughs> I try to follow the directions, only take as much medicine as the doctor prescribes. You know, I don't overdo gizmos. I don't overdo anything. You know, I did get the medical marijuana and I gained 30 pounds in one year and it didn't help me sleep. It didn't help any back pain. And so I was like, you know what? Anything that makes me hungry, I don't want anything to do with it. So, but I waited until it became legal and did it, and I didn't like it. So I only had the, wow. the card for like six months or whatever. I did it for like six months, maybe a year, I think, but I gained like 30 pounds. Get on some glutide, sister. That's the only, the only other thing you could do, and it's $300 a bottle, and you can get on it, and um, it will change yeah, your life they within won't give a few it to me. I lied. I did one of those online things you know to try to get it with like row and i told them i was five five and 160 pounds and i'm I'm sitting there i had on like three shirts and big baggy sweatpants like if they wanted to see me stand up or whatever she goes you're seven pounds away from being your bmi is seven pounds away from being to get it i was like shit why didn't i look at the chart before I told her, I would have told her I was 167 pounds. You know? Well, no, I'll tell you what to do. I'll send you the link later to the person that's prescribed mine to me, but I know someone who'll send it to you also, but, but it's expensive. You, no, no. If you tell them you have a thyroid problem, right? Joe Beast was smoking pot. That's all. Um, if you tell them like you have a thyroid issue that will make you automatically eligible and you have to lie about your height. I know well, I should I be given the thyroid advice. problem. I take, well, I take there you Synthroid. go. I take Synthroid. There you go. See, so I'm telling you, there's so many ways around this. And I'm not giving people medical advice, by the way, because we do yeah, have an actual call in the chat right now. 
I'm just, you know, you got to help girls got to help girls. And that's what this business is lacking. You know, a a pill bottle and it has little red things on there. It's probably something good. Little red stickers that say, do not use machinery or drive. Then it's probably good stuff. (laughs) So wait, do you still drink alcohol or not? Like not with medicine? No, not with my medicine. I can't. But you do I drink. I don't drink, so I don't drink. Okay, so it wasn't like bad if I had alcohol in front of you then. No, that doesn't bother me at all. Okay. That then happened until later, anyway. With the Easter Bunny shit. I drink shit. on the weekends, all the time. It doesn't bother me at all. Cause, okay, because so drinking okay. wasn't my thing, so I don't have a problem with that. Now, I'm not even going to go into that, you know. But I just don't do it no more. Okay, I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna ask. Eric's gonna be so mad at me. He said, "Don't talk about sex. Don't talk fucking... about drugs, and and everything." So he's gonna be mad at me. Tell him to blame about... it on me. Tell him to come after me. I don't care. It's crazy when these guys tell you what you should and should not talk about, but yet they want to go there sniveling like little bitches sometimes about things. You know, it's like, bro. I know, but I talked about Tommy Rich and and stuff. So know. what? People already know these stories, or they're curious, and I we don't. It was in my people. book. It was in my book. So my only issue is that he was too old. Like that just really irks me. Is these are old people? These are old. They were old then. You know, they're just they're too old. Tommy wasn't old then. In 1981, he was the hottest thing on cable TV. He was Mr. Cable TV. Have you seen a picture of Tommy when he was eight? In 1981? No. Oh my God. He was a good looking man. Let me tell you. Tommy. So was Michael Hayes. Michael Hayes. I knew Michael Hayes was. So good looking. Okay. See, this is the more informal podcast I do once a week. So you can't expect, you know, you got to expect that we do talk about whatever. Um, You know, like I was talking about Trumpy Baby earlier briefly. Um, I love him. But you got to tell me about you and OJ. Oh, OJ, I met um, New Year's Eve. Oh, yeah, he was good looking, 1981. He yeah, was? look at him. He had a mullet. Um, yeah, no, I was at um, New Year's Eve at St. Mark's in Venice in 1997, and he was sitting there. He came over to me to ask if I wanted to hang out with him and his friends at a table. He's with some little white girl that looked like Nicole Brown, like, but she was 19 or 20, well, 21 maybe. She was from Idaho, and then uh, I took photos with them, and then I was part. I went with them to their boat. Nothing happened to me. There was no nothing sexual. They were just all partying, doing drugs. Yeah, I don't think they would do anything after. I got bored. Yeah. Like I got really bored. Um, his son was there, and he was making all these jokes about knives and cu- just all this shit. I didn't know his son was like a professional chef, eh? So it's all this other stuff that like makes me think: Did the son do it? Like I don't know yeah. who did it. I- I think this, I don't know. I don't know. It's like, it's a mixed bag, but every time I've met OJ, he was very nice. Plus, I mean, they were into some heavy hitters with, um, you know, that were doing drugs in that whole Brentwood crowd. And anyone who knows Brentwood, right. California, that's what these people do. I think he was Chloe's uh, father. Who's Chloe? Kardashian. She looks like him. I don't know which Kardashian that is. They all look the same. Uh, she looks like OJ. And then, like, they were all into this crazy swinger shit back in that time. I mean, yeah. just, well, you should know. I mean, you were hanging out in L.A. at the Rock Store in the 90s. You had a motorcycle as well. Yeah. And I saw your photo I there. Did, but no, we didn't swing. Jason was Jason was young. I was young. We didn't do any of that swinging shit. No drugs. I didn't do drugs back then. I didn't party. We didn't party. We didn't. We didn't do anything. We just rode our motorcycles, went shopping, and hung out. Then he married a porn star, by the way. In case anyone doesn't know, I like know, I know. he's like trying to kayfabe I'm it. Sure it's his like you. Mom and dad loved bringing her home. Oh yeah, I she knew his mom yeah. and dad pretty well. They're like more Her far right wing, like that. But whatever. Well, yeah, I was there when they met and all. I didn't know you had a history with him, or I would have told you to sue him for palimony or something. But um, I know so- you have. he lied to me. And you know, the one thing in a relationship which I've learned, and the same thing with Eddie Gilbert, like I've had so many men lie to me in a relationship, and 
when I caught Jason in the lie, I was like, you know, if you would have told me that you went out with him on the boat and they were, and he brought girls on the boat and you <laughs> would have told me when you got home, cause this is before cell phones, I would have been like, Oh, okay. Why did Byron do that? You know? And, and, probably quiz you a little bit. Did you think they were pretty? Did you mess around? You know, but I know he wouldn't have cheated on me, but the idea of him not telling me, and I had to hear it from the guy's girlfriend. Well, you know, there was girls out on the boat when they went out. And I was like, Oh really? Called up my girlfriend. Jim, could you get tickets to the spectrum to the hockey game? Cause I was, yeah. in, I was in Philly. She's like, yeah, I can. And so we went and they were like, oh, can you come back in the back and sign some autographs? They're like, I want that Rod Brindamore is kind of cute to me, you know? And so I get him to sign me a stick and everything. And he asked me, hey, you want to go get something to drink? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, one thing. And then I went back up to see him and, you know, one thing led to another. But, I, you know, I did it more as, a, you know, get back at him. You know, it was a stupid, you know, I was 24 years old, 25 years old. When you're that young, you're stupid. You do things the wrong way. You handle things the wrong way, you know, but my way of getting back in his line was, you know, to do that. But, you know, if he would have told me, there'd never be, it never would have been a problem, but it, he didn't tell me. So it made me think something Fugazi went on, you know? Yeah, well, he probably didn't want to like tell you so that you suspect things. Because he, he said, "If I told you, I thought you would get mad." No, I'm more mad that you lied. You know, what trust is broken. Once trust is broken in a relationship, then you know it's really hard to get back. Yeah, you know, but that's like and a WWE happened to me. I don't know how I wouldn't handle it. I wouldn't have handled it the way I handled it. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't go out and look for somebody to fool around with, but um, I sure wouldn't handle it that way. I don't know how I would handle it now. I just think I'd be hurt more than anything and disappointed and everything. And I don't know if I could trust that person ever again. It comes with age and like a breach of trust is a breach of trust, no matter what the lie is for or what it's covering. And guys could be so fucking stupid sometimes. It's like, don't I, talk to your fucking ex, you know, or I'll smash your fingers in. It's stuff like that. They don't get it. You know, yeah. I've yeah. like never been friends with exes really. Cause I, I, I walk by, if I ever I see an ex, I just walk all past my them. exes except him. See, I but mean, that's the thing. I'm not friends with these people. I just walk past them like they're dead. If I don't like someone, it's the same thing. Like, I'm not going to say anything and confront you. I just right. stay in my corner. We see each other. That's great. But there's no talking like you're dead. I'm dead to you. So let's just treat each other like perfect strangers. And that's right. it. See, I'm friends. Like, one of these guys, I mean, we really, we, we kind of dated, but I don't think we really dated because there was no, like, <laughs> attraction attraction but we kind of dated and i was looking for a girlfriend for him but is it anyone you've nice mentioned guy. nice guy i want him to be happy you know uh-huh do i know this person exes i wish them nothing but happiness you know except for maybe jake <laughs> Oh my God, dude, the looks, I thought she's going to rip my eyeballs out. The way she looked at me, she stole Jake from me. She should have came up to me. That was 50 years ago. Almost, no, almost 45 years ago or whatever. 43 years ago, 44 years ago, whatever it was, I forget. But that was a long time ago. I mean, she shouldn't have gave me the evil eye like that. Like, I would never do that to anybody. I would never, ever do that to anybody. I don't know. She did it she all did. around. She did it no. all around though, Missy, because I was there. You're like, here, you could just sit at this table. So it's between us. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like, am I going to get jumped or something? Oh, okay. Then you're telling me the story. I'm like, oh, I shit. Do that. I don't think she oh, would do that. Like, I don't know why she, you know, I did Eddie. See, I didn't know Eddie was married when I first met him, Eddie Gilbert. I didn't know yeah. he was married. He just got married when I met him and I didn't find out this is a story that's never been told. 
I didn't find out he was married until I was moving to Baton Rouge and stopped in Alexandria, Louisiana and called him up, said, hey, I'm at the hotel. You want to stop by? He stops by. Ten minutes later, there's a knock on the door. I go to answer it. And there's this lady grabbing me by the hair going, get off my husband. Leave my husband alone. And I remember holding her wrist going, get her off me, Eddie. Get her off me. You know, Eddie got her off me. And I said, you need to go talk. You need to go talk to her. And then you need to explain this shit to me. You know, and then I ended up marrying him like an idiot. Because, you know, if he's going to cheat on her, he's going to cheat on me. Oh, yeah. That, there's nothing makes me more special than her. You know, that 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 he's not going to cheat on me. And he cheated on me. And lost his bag and his credit cards and his wedding ring. Oh, I so. remember that. I read that in the book, too, which was, like, so awesome, so golden. Uh, what's your experience with Terry Reynolds like? She's nice to me. Yeah, she's nice pretty girl. Because I remember her when she was the makeup girl. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's what she used to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was a I makeup girl. She used to do Jim Ross's and Polly's makeup at Center Stage. I remember how cute she was because she was just a little cute thing. Yeah. She came yeah. to a birthday party. We had a birth we had a, I had a birthday party and she came to a birthday party and she had cut off all her hair and she was a short bleached hair. She's in my book. There's a picture of her in my book. And she's got legs for days for being so little and petite. What's the name of your book in case people want to buy it? And where can they buy it? First Lady of Wrestling Tells All. But I'm going to give you a, a, some advice. It's $100 on Amazon. But if you go on eBay, sometimes you can find it for like 20 25 on eBay. But you get the money from Amazon, right? No. You I don't get money? Any money from it. That book came out in 2000. I haven't gotten any residuals in the last... 13 years. Mm -hmm. I only got residuals for like the first seven years. Mm -hmm. I think you need to get a forensic accountant on this somehow. Um, let me know if you need help with that. Okay. No, I'm not joking. Like it's just, you know, you have a good successful Jewish people that you can turn me on to. Yeah, no successful people such as yourself have, you know, a slew of people you go to for these things, or they know people that do such as accountants, lawyers, whatever you they're need. Canadian. And that's what you call protecting your brand. That's yeah, all it is. Canadian. I don't care. I own my name. I mean, I own my name and likeness. I'm trademarked and copyrighted. So, you know, mm -hmm. I own okay. the first lady of Missy Hype, first lady of wrestling. So I own that. So if anybody unacceptable. dares Just... to call themselves the first lady, I will sue. Or you hear sue. that? And then sue. That goes for all of you, men and women. But I know yeah. it's getting late yeah, by you. Guys out there that want to call yourself the first lady, then I'll really have an issue with that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Me too. You too. Me too. Yeah. Um, but I thank you for hopping on. I know it's getting late there, yeah. and you got to get up early. Thank you. I gotta um, drink some more of that stuff too. Give us your handles really quick like before you go. Every thirty minutes. Yeah, I found it before. It was um something called Merrillax or something. Uh, so. Can you give us your socials really quick and guys yeah. take this down? Yeah, it's Go ahead. Missy Hyatt at, on Twitter or at Twitter and then the real Missy Hyatt on Instagram. Okay. Well, you look I gorgeous. I think there was another Missy Hyatt, so I did the real Missy Hyatt. You're the only Missy Hyatt in my eyes. Oh, thank um, you, sweetie. So I can't wait to see you sooner than later. Stay yes, in touch. I'm sure I'll see you in Phoenix. Yep, for sure. Yeah. You stay out of trouble, and um, I look forward to so you stay out of trouble. No, I left that shit last month, girl, because that's bad people. I left that shit a while ago. We love you, Veronica. Veronica's on there saying thanks, ladies. Oh, yes. We love you, and we love lifting you. So I'll see you soon. See you in Phoenix. Okay. Bye. Bye. All right, guys. This is um where I kind of like do my outro, which is just very, you know, whatever. It's my roundup. You know, first of all, fuck the judge in the Trump trial because let him go to his son's graduations. These are milestones. Okay. Secondly, secondly, you know, anyone who wants to do business in New York City after this trial, you are a nut job. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, if you want to catch all my things, it's just at the real Jasmine St. Clair on Instagram. On YouTube, it's Crazy Train Podcast. 
Twitter, it's Jasmine St. Clair. And I thank you guys being for so loyal and joining me every week. And we have uh, new episodes of Crazy Train with Jasmine St. Clair on iTunes every Wednesday. I took a break for a couple of weeks just from traveling. Make sure to subscribe to this channel. Next week's guest is Vic Lagina. The week after that, Marcella Olanzo and other ones coming up soon. Thanks again. Um, thank you, Ian. Stay frosty, everyone. <laughs>